A team of scientists in the U.S. and the U.K. have, for the first time ever, created a human embryo from human stem cells, more accurately described as embryo-like structures, because they don't have a beating heart or brain yet, but have reached a crucial stage in early development. It is the first time something resembling a human embryo has been created without the use of an egg or sperm cells. With us this morning is futurist and founder of tech education company Way, Sinead Bovell. Sinead, nice to see you. Well, good to see you again, too. Okay, so what have these scientists created exactly? Right, and so around the same time, there's actually a breakthrough with his, an Israeli team. And so these aren't exactly human embryos. They are synthetic embryos, so models of embryos. They're structures that look and behave in some ways like embryos, but they were created in a lab from stem cells. So like you said, no egg sperm fertilization. We went just from an embryonic stem cell into self-organizing structures that could behave like, like embryos. Uh, and at the moment, I want you to, to know that these synthetic human embryos, they don't actually have the, the ability to become a baby or even okay. form organs or anything like that. And there's rules around this kind of thing, too. I mean, it's illegal to implant these embryos into a womb, I understand. It's also illegal to cultivate embryos in a lab past 14 days. So what exactly could we learn from these synthetic embryos? Yes, and these ones couldn't even be uh, implanted. They're so you know, far from that. But at this point in time, in the context of fertility, this is really exciting um, because the science for understanding loss of life, miscarriages often happen in the very early days and weeks of pregnancy. And we don't have a lot of visibility into these processes. Uh, and then, as you mentioned, when studying human embryos, there's all sorts of ethical challenges. Most countries say, you know, you can't study them past 14 days. So if we can understand things through these model embryos, where things might go wrong in the lab, uh, it could be transformative for people trying to get pregnant. It also gives us more insight uh, into new pathways for human reproduction. What do you so mean by you that? May have, right. So you may, I'll give you two different examples. You may have heard of IVF. Um, but you probably haven't heard of IVG, in vitro gametogenesis, where we take, say, a skin cell or a blood cell, we convert that into a stem cell, and from there we turn those stem cells into eggs or sperm and create embryos that way in the lab. This has been successfully done in mice. Um, and then again, in the very far out world, these synthetic embryo models could themselves potentially grow into a fetus, uh, bypassing uh, the need for fertilization entirely. Again, that one is a big if, um, but IVG, uh, we've successfully you know, brought pups to life from mice, uh, changing the skin cells in the mice tail into stem cells and then putting that into egg and fertilizing it. Uh, with another mouse sperm. So, so this some exciting. Yeah, Sinead, could this potentially mean like a same sex couple, for example? Could be a. IVG. Yeah, IVG would be helpful in that respect. Absolutely. Wow. So a same-sex couple, it could the child could be biologically related to both, to both parents. Um, and then again, even IVF, there are a lot of people that don't qualify because they have trouble even making egg or making mm -hmm. sperm. So a process like IVG could be helpful or uh, synthetic embryos. So just the more insight we get into what happens in, in embryo production and going from stem cell to desired structure, right. the better for, for myriad reasons. Okay, we got to talk about the ethics of all of this, though, because it's obviously controversial. What are the big concerns? Right, so there are a few. Um, one being, we don't know at this point in time what are the ethical guardrails around how far we can grow these synthetic human embryos. Right now, at least the science is kind of limited, so that's the kind of input the guardrail. Uh, but we don't actually have frameworks for, for evaluating this. Uh, when it comes to IVF um, and in creating you know, eggs or, or sorry, creating embryos in the lab that way, we do have a lot of limits and guidelines. Those don't exist um, in the world of synthetic embryos and kind of creating these things in the lab. Uh, mm -hmm. So again, we're far off from where this could get go too far, but these are, this is an important moment to have these conversations. What is the international community going to agree to? Where mm -hmm. are we in this moment and where are we going? Well, thanks for having the conversation with us this morning. Sinead Boval, we appreciate it. Have a good weekend. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.